Welcome to the Beyond Woman Conversations podcast, the place that inspires beautiful change. Join us, your host, Jacqueline Walker-Johnson and Misha Levan clark So good night, Beyond Woman. Thank you for joining us for the first conversation for 2020. I am your host, Jacqueline Walker-Johnson, and my co-host, Misha, is missing today, but she sends her love. And joining me is our special guest, Diana Burgess. And Burgess. <laughs> <laughs> I can be called Diana and be good with that. <laughs> okay, ma'am. So tonight we're talking about being enough in the moment, you know, loving ourselves and accepting that where life finds us is where we should be. But before we get into the conversation, I want to use this opportunity to introduce Diana to all of you. And um, Diana is no stranger to the Beyond Woman. And, you know, she's a friend, she's a mentor to the movement, she's an encourager, and she was our second issue main feature woman. So if you, if, you, if you happen to see our second issue anywhere, that's Diana. And she shared with us, you know, her incredible multifaceted story. And I cannot even begin to touch on that because we don't, we don't have the time. That's another story. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said before, you know, you can go to any of our platform, especially our website, which is the beyondwoman.com and read Diana's story. She's also the talent and culture management consultant at JMMB and the CEO of her own coaching practice. Well, coaching for greatness company, which is called Much More Development. So welcome, Diana. It's so happy, so nice to Thank have you. Thank you. Thank you. Your, your expertise on such a topic. Yes. That is Thank deep <laughs> and, and well. a topic that, you know, we, um, we tend to not admit readily. Uh-huh. You know, that's a, that's, that this is an issue with us, us accepting ourselves and, and appreciating where we are in any moment that we're in, you know. And I just want to start with a, with a quote which says to love oneself is the beginning of a lifelong romance. And that is from Oscar Wilde. You know that quote, Diana? Yes, I have heard. Yes, yes, yes. I've, I've seen it. Mm. And that is amazing. Let me tell you, it really does speak to how and where you go to love yourself. Yeah, it is definitely the beginning of romance. Self. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, man, to, to self, with self. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and the big thing is that I believe that if we were living this quote, then we definitely would not be having this conversation today, you know? And as I said before, sometimes we really need to get honest with ourselves and admit to some of the things that mm-hmm. are holding us back. And this is one of them, you know, whether we're accepting ourselves in, in the moment and loving ourselves and believing that we are mm-hmm. we, where we need to be. We are enough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to start off by asking you, Diana, what is it that you think prevents us from fully loving and accepting ourselves in the moment? And um, maybe in the midst of all of that, you can talk about, you know, what, loving ourselves actually look like right so i think life and how we see life or we choose to see life is where we get stopped and that's where i think that's what is preventing us right so when i think about self-love i have to go all the way back to the origin of our lives in terms of um, people. So we would have, if we look back at our history, a lot of us would have, ha- we would have parents who came from the days when um, there was always something or someone or some group of people who are seen seen to be better than us 
are seen to be more than who we are, right? Who they were as, as, as people growing up. And mm-hmm. so there's a place where when I think about it, I can, I can recall um, growing up in situations where even our own parents would, uh, would chide us to look at so-and-so Folk, look at those people that is so and how, true. Yeah. But mm-hmm. how they are behaving or how they operate. And, and so we kind of get socialized to look out at other persons than to look at ourselves and to focus on what's great about us. So I think no. it starts mm-hmm. from our socialization in, in, in some ways. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's, that's where I think. So, so when you're socialized to look out and then you grow up in a world where everything is created in a way that, that seems to be better than where you are right now. So if you look at how, how um, ads, you know, like how people advertise for beauty care or hair care or all those kinds of stuff, everything is say, saying, if you can get that, then you will be all that and you'll be better than where you are today. So there's not, we've never been socialized to focus on where we are and to appreciate much of where we are. It's always a look how much different you can get. Look how much more you could be if you did this or had this or traveled here or you know, had this kind of friends or so. So I think in that way, that's where I think it came from. Mm -hmm. I like how you're bringing in the Mm -hmm. fact of not just our parents, because, you know, usually that's our default. Immediately Mm -hmm. we we begin to think about how the parents grew us and all of that. But based on what you're just said, you just said, Mm -hmm. it suggests. And I mean, I didn't even think about it like you know, the way that you have brought it across. I didn't think about it in a wholesome way in terms of just about everything that is around us Mm -hmm. um, is pointed at us looking at the external and not at the internal. And um, that is just so profound, you know? And it, 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 it shows us that as women, and, you know, I'm focusing on women and easily we can perhaps see men in the same light. But yeah. I believe because of how we are as women, you know, we, we are a little bit more deeper and we, you know, we tend to, um, how would I put it now? We tend to internalize. Yeah. And get really emotional about these things, you know? Yes. Um, so I can easily see the struggle that we as women have to deal with. And, and I want to add something mm-hmm. to that as well. So in my role, I, I do a lot of coaching, yes? Mm-hmm. And what I find, I find that when I am working with people, men or women, the focus is on what they need to improve, mm-hmm. what, what they need to be working on, and not so much on how to maximize and do, just value where they are and what they actually are bringing to the world. So Mm -hmm. the focus again is on how else, what can I move towards? How can I work on myself? You know, that statement where we always, people are trying so hard to work on themselves to Mm -hmm. get Mm -hmm. someplace else than where they are today. Mm -hmm. And I think even inside of the corporate world, people the the focus tend to be on um, strengthening your weakness rather than working with and maximizing your strengths. Mm -hmm. So inside of that sphere, you get that whole need and that whole um, focus on what's out there that's not in here. Mm -hmm. And so that area, we we start to now move away from appreciating where we are and maximizing where we are and then and and the focus now shifts to what else that other person is able to do that or or that other thing is out there or wherever i need to strive to rather 
rather than how can I work with and maximize what I have and where I am. Mm -hmm. So you are suggesting, I I suppose when you look at it from the um, work environment, one would say that, um, you know, it's all about what you can do for us. And it's not really about you and what you're bringing. You know, we have our goals, we have our targets, and that is just what we need to get done. And I often wonder, because I think that um, Richard Branson is a, a big advocate of developing the individual themselves within the work environment. So, uh-huh. you know, based on what you're just saying, I hope I am getting it correct. You can suggest that sometimes it is better for us to develop the person with what they have and uh-huh. then in the long run the company itself itself will will benefit definitely mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the thing that i would love to see starting from the kindergarten all the way to university is for people to be guided towards maximizing their strengths rather than trying to develop on their weaknesses Mm -hmm. and it that for me is actually um really really key to people when they get into our our phase of life more mature and more at that place now where they're you know trying to actualize and all those things when they get here they are really really in love with themselves Mm -hmm. because you get you, you get to People, you grow up with a situation where the self that you bring to the table ne- is just never seem to be enough. You're yeah. all it's, yeah. it's all like you are being guided and trained, and people want you to develop on your weaknesses. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like if I were trying to develop on my weaknesses, I would n- never be where I am today. Because really and truly, if you, I, so I know that being organized and being good with numbers and all those things those things are great mm-hmm. and then those are not my strengths mm-hmm, so if mm-hmm. i were ever trying to develop my strengths as a um numbers guru i would be stuck somewhere trying still trying to pass maths <laughs> you understand what i'm saying mm-hmm, and i move mm-hmm. away from passing maths to understanding my strengths in working with people and developing those things and coaching and those things. I don't, I need a little bit of, at least be able to add up, but I don't need to be a maths guru mm-hmm. you know, to do. With because you I'm have, you have, you have, a, you have a maths guru in the organization already. Amen. You know, you probably don't need another one. And mm-hmm. I, I am very happy that you're, you're bringing, bringing this up because even outside of the workplace, what it speaks to is the fact that we need to understand that we are, all different and we all have a certain ability that somebody else don't have so instead of trying to be what we're not why not just try to be who we are and that is where this whole matter of getting to the place of acceptance starts exactly be as much as you are and more of who you are rather than trying to the, the minute you start to look to the left and to the right rather than f- focus in the mirror on who you are and what you're bringing mm-hmm. that's when you start to lose balance and focus mm-hmm. and i'm saying this um anal- analogous to um when you're doing when you're in a yoga class the teacher tells you look at yourself in the mirror focus this is your time remain in focus in the mirror do not look to the left or to the right because everybody else is bringing what they are bringing to this class the moment you lose that focus that's when you you lose your balance mm-hmm. Focus mm-hmm. on what you are bringing in the moment and the more you the more you, de- you, you develop on who you are and what you are bringing that is the stronger you get inside of that sphere mm-hmm Exactly. And, and we just need to stop trying to be everything, you know, we, we need to stop. Yeah. And, and 
mm-hmm. and look away from ourselves. Look, when we look, the more we look away from ourselves, is the less we are able to we, we are seen of ourselves. Because what's happening now, you know, when you're looking away from yourself, you start to glance over to the left and to the right at other people and what they are doing and see seeing the world. When you look on social media and you see all these people and they are so flawless and they're this and they're they are <laughs> doing all kinds of stuff and that's in the moment. When I see how it how easy it is for me to um to cut and paste my photos so that when I post them on social media, they look like exactly how I want them to look. You understand what I'm saying? Oh and it's like, the moment. And when I, I, when I finish and move away from that camera, my <laughs> other self is showing up, right? So that's the thing. And then uh, when other people look at my picture, they're like, wow, if I could just look like Diana. And I tell you, can I tell, you know, I always give this joke, you know, I always say to people that if you ever catch me, like on a Sunday morning when I'm not going to church mm-hmm. or a Saturday morning when I'm doing housework, you'd be very shocked. And I mean, I am not putting out false, um, a false impression, but it is just natural for all of us to put out the best of ourselves on social media and nothing is wrong with that but when we're going to get caught up and do and do not understand that that is what people are doing then you know that is where the problem arise because you see perfection or what you think is perfection in your mind Mm -hmm. and you don't see this person as a regular person when i'm at home i love gardening I'm pretty sure that nobody can see me out there with my perfectly manicured false nails. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Because, I mean, they are. I mean, they're my nails, but I have acrylic over them to make them look really nice. And, you know, nobody can imagine that I don't even put on gloves to put my hand in the dirt because that's Mm -hmm. what I love. I go down mm-hmm. on my hands and my, my knees and I'm out there with my flowers and enjoying myself. And, and, and that is... And that yeah. for me is the key. When you are able... That, is, that for me is how you get to be in the moment of who you are and accept where you are. Where you are. And then there's another level to that. So we are all in this place of striving. When I look on social media and I am not knocking social media because it serves a purpose. I'm not great at it, but I know it serves a huge purpose. A lot of the times when you see everything is about maximizing and monetizing and being out there and having all this more, 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 more. Yeah. And it takes away from where you are at the moment. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, this moment is the only moment that exists in life uh, because we do not know what is going to happen in the moment to come. Right, right. And the moments that went by, they're already gone. This moment is the only moment we have. And if we, if we lose this moment just because we want to reach for the moments to come, that for me is where we lose out on mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. Because so we really always, need to, yes, we need to I exist in the moment. Nobody, the no, nobody is saying that we can't strive and want more for our lives. Yes. But you cannot put off your experience in the present to go chasing the future. Exactly. You have to maximize the presence, the present, and do what mm-hmm. you need to do in the present to ensure that what you want for the future will be a reality. Yeah. You know, and and, and, I mean, and that is one way of looking at it, Jackie. And that's also that's really correct. And there's another way that so so I have this saying and I speak to people a lot about living retired, live retired. And let me tell you something. It might not seem like the most prudent 
um, recommendation, but let me tell you something. When you are able to live the life, the exact one life that you have right now, I'm not into this story of living your best life because it's one life you have and it's this one life. There's mm -hmm. no best or worst life. This is the life right here. So <laughs> when you get into the consciousness of living your one life to the best that you can, rather than waiting for that number of 60 or 65 or whichever age, 52, whenever you say you want to quote unquote retire. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. When you live right now, to the fullest as how you are dreaming of living when you would when you retire that's it for you. that's where you get that is where the juice of living is mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's it right there so because you're saying you totally in the present exactly totally in the present mm -hmm. totally in the present okay i am not saying that that you know, you don't need to be wise and i'm not saying going and go on and be careless with your spending and all those kinds of stuff. I'm saying this moment that you have here, understand that this is the only one that you are guaranteed. And if you get that you are all sufficient for this moment, then every other moment that you may be afforded will be great. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. because of how you live this moment here and mm -hmm. and, and notice i said may be afforded mm -hmm. yes and that's the point that's the point because um tomorrow is just definitely not promised to anybody and and when we're waiting and we're putting off you know and we're looking at somebody else and hoping to be like mm -hmm. them and not maximizing our potential that we have yeah. right now and ex accepting ourselves right now then we're losing out yes we, we none of us as you rightly say none of us know what tomorrow will bring to us mm -hmm. and if we keep putting it off we're just not gonna live because what if tomorrow comes and you die mm -hmm. you know you would not have experienced life the way that you need to exactly but i want to touch quickly on how we can begin to live in the moment i think we touched a little bit of it but we want to zero in on um some specifics in terms of what we can do for to... me mm -hmm. go ahead and for me mm -hmm. one thing i would i would recommend and this is not a religious program and i am totally far from being religious but i am highly spiritual and very very connected with god and so i cannot not speak about that yes of course and we welcome it we in in so I will, I exactly, I want to say that I live my life conscious of the, the fact that the Bible says, take no thought for your life what you shall eat or what you shall put on or who you shall be or what, um, what job you're going to take or all of that is what's inside of all of that. Take no thought for your life. And I am juvenile as it relates to believing those words. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When I say I'm juvenile, juvenile, I mean that I take it literally. Yeah, I understand. And that is how... I, that, that's where I come from. That's where I'm, that's where I ground myself as it relates to being in where, being in the moment and accepting where I am and maximizing where I am. Because if we get it that when we take on the future, nothing is going to change because we are taking on the future and worrying and thinking and wanting to be somewhere else than we are at. Nothing is going to change. Or taking that on is not going to impact how it's going to turn out. Mm -hmm. And so that's the first place. 
find a place to ground yourself. A belief, uh, uh, whatever it is, wherever you ground yourself. And that is where I recommend that you ground yourself, understanding that your life is not your own. Yeah. And just like the manufacturers of the car that never, when the car make, they don't, the car is not complete without the manual and, and how it is cared for. And it's not, it didn't come here on its own. You didn't come here on your own either. Mm -hmm. So it's, so you, so it's, you know, when just come here and then be allowed to just go and nothing you know no one cares for you yes you may think so but you just need to understand that you you came with everything you needed and you're going to grow up and you're going to develop on what you came with because no one came here without gifts you may come with you could you came with different gifts that you didn't come with the same gifts I, that i got nor did i got the same that you got or tom dick or harry or me Mary or Jane, but I got gifts. Yes. And the way how you maximize those gifts, the way how you focus on those gifts and build up on them, that is what's going to give you the miraculous life that you might be seeking out there in the future because it's right here. You came with it. Yeah. So that's the first place. And that's, that is my grounding. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, of course, I personally believe in growing and giving to other persons around me mm -hmm. and that is how i know that i am going to be good for the rest of my life because of how i how i how i use my gifts and focus less on getting 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 and focus more on giving 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 mm -hmm. that for mm -hmm. me is where I can tell you, I know, like I know that my name is Diana, that when you allow your, if you look at your hands and, and you're, you're grasping, so your fists, your hands are closed, nothing is going in or out. And the more you, be, the freer you are with whatever gifts you have been given is the more you are going to get to maximize where you are at. I'm telling you straight. That's all I see. It. And then of course there are some other things in terms of, you know, understanding more about your gifts, being able to understand your strengths and develop your strengths. Those are, you know, there are different tools that can support you in doing that. The more you focus on who you are and whose you are, you are going to be good. It may sound juvenile, but it's really so. It's not. It's not. It's very practical. And it is something that I know that if we put in practice, because even the giving part of it, I can attest to that also. It's just a wholesome way of putting. Yes. Putting, and putting, we are living you know, in the world of more, 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 more. And so yeah. that's where... A lot of us lose our way. Mm -hmm. We lose our way because when we look out there and see this, that, that, and the other, we're like, oh my God. And you're trying to figure out how, how you I can. need to have that too, right? Yeah. And, and that becomes the focus. Yes. And it tires you out. You're tired. Yeah. You're weary. Because you're still, every day you go to your bed, you're thinking about how you can make more. Or how you can find more, how you can get more and more, more, more. You're stressed mm -hmm. out. You don't even realize what you have in front of you. Exactly. Because you're looking for more. It's distraction. It's distracting and it's distracting you. And I always go back to saying that there are a lot more things that are in our control than we believe. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes, you know, um, even this topic, we, 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 we just get caught up with the part that, you know, I've been socialized this way and this is how I am. Even though we want a better life, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty simple. It's just making some changes in how we think, you know, in our mindset. And I guess that is why it's always good for us to have mentors, to have coaches, yes. to, you know, reinforce these things 
um, in our lives and help us to get to that point where we recognize what is important, you know? And, um, you know, the only thing I will add is that we have to understand that we are imperfect beings. That's just, that's just it. Mm -hmm. While we're here on this earth, we're imperfect beings. But guess what? We are perfect for whatever it is that life brings to us in whatever moment. Yes. And as you rightly say, Diana, it's all about just not chasing the more. Sometimes we're, we're chasing something that's an illusion, so to speak. We need to just stop. We, we need to just stop and just, it's as they would say, smell the yeah. coffee. Yeah. See the, the, that the roses are red. Yeah. See that the sky above you is blue. You know, just appreciate the little things in life. I have learned to appreciate the little things in life. I was caught up in that kind of thinking. It's a process and it's a challenge because of, as we started out, the whole socialization process. Yes. But when you get to a point where you recognize that deep within you know that this is not how it is supposed to be. That there are a lot of things out there that are super Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to do something about it. And I'm just hoping that the conversation tonight, um, it's short and spicy. Yes. And I'm sure that we're going to pick up on this conversation again. Um, You know, I'm thinking in my mind, you know, I'm listening to you and I'm thinking in my mind that this perhaps need like a part two. Yes. As as most conversations are going to end now with you know what have been said and really really hope that it has brought value to our listeners to our beyond women and as as usual i want to end with a quote and it's from sharon salzberg hope i'm pronouncing it correct and it says you can search throughout the entire universe for someone who is more deserving of your love and affection than you are yourself And that person is not to be found anywhere. You yourself, as much as anybody in the entire universe, deserve your love and your affection. Mm -hmm. Right? And it all begins with us accepting ourselves. Like beautiful as it is. Yes. And with what we have in the moment. Yes. God didn't make a mistake. Mm -hmm. you know he did not make a mistake and when we do not accept accept ourselves where we are what we have it is as if we're saying that god you made a mistake and we know that that is not possible exactly your perfectly imperfect self is waiting on your approval it's waiting on your hug it's waiting on your forgiveness and your love most of all and we need to allow the love and acceptance that we feel with mm-hmm. it. We need to start feeling that and allow it to Especially pass in this others. season when love and love and love is going I'm up. Telling you, up this Valentine's. Around love, Valentine's <laughs> and everything. And who feel like they don't have any Valentine, you have yourself. You yeah, have yourself. And let me tell you something. If you are not loving who you are, Miss Right or Mr. Right is not going to have anybody to love. You have to love who you are and who you are bringing to this world. First and foremost. Exactly. Life is beautiful. And it, I mean, you, love is just love. I mean, when I see how just the beauty of the world and the flowers and the trees and the, the, the people around, the different people when you walk on the street, it's just so much to love. Love, so much to appreciate and so yes i think it is really for us to just be where we are and love who we are and where we are awesome awesome diana thank you so much i'm really sorry misha is not here from her thank you so much for being a part of this conversation Thanks diana for your invite and for i your will wisdom and your love please call me anytime you want <laughs> willing and ready That's you, Diana. Of course. Yes, yes. All right. And we thank our listeners, of course, and look forward to the next conversation that's coming up soon. And feel free to add anything that you would want us to be talking about. Of course. Of course. We do get the feedback from time to time. But yes, yes, it's an open forum and we welcome um, 
whatever it is that you want for us to discuss, we are very open to it. So have a wonderful one until the next conversation. Yes, thank you. Bye. All right.